Welcome to the unit 1. This unit is classified into three sections. They are Section A The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse Section B The Town Child and the Country Child Section C The New Blue Dress Welcome to the reading section the town mouse and the country mouse. Overview Let us have a look at the overview. The overview slide consists of three sections, namely introduction, instruction and evaluation. The introduction section is meant to motivate the student to learn the lesson. The instruction section divides the contents of the lesson into four subsections. They are content, communication, constructive components, and enrichment activities. The lesson is covered under content. All the activities pertaining to the four skills of language and their assessment are covered under the sections communication, and the constructive components. The enrichment activities are meant to widen the scope of the student's thinking and learning, thereby making him or her a global citizen. The extent of understanding of the module can be assessed by the student under the evaluation section. Learning Objectives By the end of this section, you will be able to List the differences between a town and a country Identify phrases Describe compound nouns Write the degrees of comparison List and use helping verbs Express wishes using unreal past Observe the images carefully and answer the following questions. What differences do you observe when both the pictures are compared? Where do you prefer to live, countryside or townside? Justify your answer with reasons. What is your favorite place, town or village and why? Suppose you live in a town and visit a village for the first time or you live in a village and visit a town for the first time. How do you feel? You will have a very different experience, right? Even in the present section, the town mouse and the country mouse, we will see how a town mouse felt when it visited a village and how a country mouse felt when it visited a town for the first time. Let us do an activity. Observe the following images and answer the questions given. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse There lived a country mouse and a town mouse who were cousins. The country mouse lived in Mouse Country and the town mouse lived in Mouse Town. They used to write letters to each other very frequently. One fine day, the country mouse got a letter from the town mouse. Dear cousin, I'm not feeling well these days. I'm suffering from cough for the last four days. 
My doctor advised me to take rest for a few days in the countryside. May I stay with you? Expecting an early reply. With warm wishes, yours affectionately, Town Mouse. No sooner did the country mouse read the letter, it replied back, inviting the town mouse. Dear cousin, I am very happy that you are planning to visit mouse country. I do not have any problem if you stay with me. I am awaiting your arrival. With warm wishes, yours affectionately, country mouse. The town mouse packed his bags and left to the station. The day was very bright and sunny, so the town mouse felt hot in the train. Oh God, it's so hot. I wish there was an air-conditioned coach. Having no other choice, he grumbled to himself and the train moved slowly towards the country. The country mouse was waiting on the platform while the train chugged into the station. The train was dreadful. I feel very thirsty. I hope you have something ice cold at home to quench my thirst. Sorry, cousin. I just have some water. But I can try for some coconut water if you are okay with that. Coconut water? Can't we get any orange juice or lemonade here? Sorry, cousin. I'm afraid not. But I found a very nice piece of fruit and a tender bit of sugar cane. I'm quite sure you will like that. Root? Sugar cane? I just can't eat raw food. But this is what we all eat here. So I am afraid you two have to eat the same. This is not too bad to eat. Soon, they reached the mouse hole, the house of the country mouse. Dear cousin, this is my sweet home. The town mouse did not like the dinner that his cousin has arranged. So, he just nibbled the root and sugar cane. I would like to go to sleep now. There you are. You can comfortably sleep here. Do you mean I have to sleep on the ground? Yes. In the country, we sleep on the ground. No sooner did the town mouse sleep on the hard, cold ground, something struck in his mind. Cousin? Yes, what is it? Why is it so quiet here? Where are the cars and lorries? Where are the radios and televisions? Where are all the lights? This is how our country is pleasant and quiet. Yet times it is still more quieter than today. Do you know, my grandfather says that our country is the quietest one among all other countries in the district. Oh, is it? The country is a very strange place indeed. But the town mouse said to himself, I don't think I like this place. The next morning, the town mouse came to know that there was no breakfast ready. Is there no breakfast prepared yet, cousin? We have to go to the nearby farm to search for food. I am sure we will find something there to eat, a nice piece of root or a tender sugar cane. The town mouse has had enough of this and he could not take any more. Thank you, cousin, but I need to catch the next train home. I have just remembered that I have forgotten something bad there at home. A few days passed. One fine day, the country mouse wrote to the town mouse, Dear cousin, I hope you are in sound health now, but I am still worried about you. 
I would like to visit you and make sure that you are all right. With lots of love, your cousin, Country Mouse. As he was in a hurry, he sent a telegram to the Country Mouse. Overjoyed, come soon. Town Mouse. Welcome, cousin. How was your journey? Yeah, not bad. The town mouse and the country mouse went to the house of the town mouse, walking through the streets of the town. The country mouse got surprised by the lights and the noises, it asked his cousin. Why are the lights on even in the midnight? This is town, my dear cousin. Here we have lights on even in the midday. What is this horrible noise that never stops and disturbs everyone? That is the traffic. That is the noise made by buses, lorries, cars and airplanes. Because of the terrible noise and disturbances, the country mouse did not like the town at all. He felt headache due to unbearable noise by the traffic. May I have a glass of water to drink? Why only water? I've bought ice cold lemonade and orange juice for you. Which one do you prefer? No, thank you. I would like to have just some water. Some water and a little bit of food at the moment. The house of the town mouse, that is at the back of the kitchen cupboard, was filled with the most delicious food like jam, different types of fruits, slabs of chocolates, and a very big piece of cheese which has lovely smell and taste. Don't worry about the food, cousin. I have plenty of food for you. You can have as much as you want. Suddenly, there was a thunder-like sound. Town Mouse shouted. Run, cousin, run! The Town Mouse pushed the Country Mouse out through a hole, which was at the back of the cupboard. What happened, cousin? Why did you push me out? I can feel my heart beating very fast. Shh! Wait! Everything turned calm again. The town mouse crept out of the hole and became cheerful again as there was no one present. Come out, cousin. There's no one here. We are safe now. Okay, cousin. Good to hear that. Suddenly, somebody opened the cupboard door again and the mice ran to save their lives. The country mouse got tired of running and hiding. It said, Cousin, I would like to go back to my home in the country. In the country, we might not get plenty of food, but we could at least eat those few bits in peace. The next day, the country mouse went back to his house in the mouse country and never visited the town again. The town mouse stayed back in his cupboard in the mouse town and never visited the country again. Let us do an activity to check your memory. Read the following sentences carefully. Click the right answers that complete the given sentences.
A few statements in relation to the story are given below. Identify if they are true or false by clicking the right button. Take up the given activity to check your memory. Read the following sentences carefully and click the correct meaning of the words underlined in the questions. Phrases. In this section, we will learn about phrases in detail. A phrase is a group of words without a subject, verb, component, used as a single part of speech. Phrases do not convey complete thought. Example, I went home after the class. Kamal looked handsome in the movie. He shot an arrow into the air. In the first example, the group of words after the clause does not contain any subject or verb. So, it can be considered as a phrase. In the second example, the group of words in the movie does not contain any subject or verb. So, it can be considered as a phrase. In the third example, the group of words into the air does not contain any subject or verb. So, it can be considered as a phrase. Compound nouns. In this section, we will learn about compound nouns. A compound noun is a word formed by the combination of two words. The meaning of a compound word differs from the individual meanings of the words it is formed by. Example, Consider the two words butter and fly, both the words having their own meanings, but when they join together, they become butterfly, which is the name of an insect. Compound nouns can be formed by different combinations. A few are given below. The compound noun exists in three ways. Joined compound nouns, separated compound nouns, hyphenated compound nouns. Combination of two words, ear and phone, gives a compound noun, earphone, which is a joined compound noun. Combination of two words, water and tank, gives a compound noun, water tank, which is a separated compound noun. Combination of two words, dry and cleaning gives a compound noun dry cleaning which is a hyphenated compound noun now let us see a few more examples Take up the following activity to check your understanding. Match the words of the first column with the words of the second column to form proper compound words by dragging and placing.
In this section, we will learn about degrees of comparison. Usually, we use qualities or characteristics or adjectives of people, places or things to compare them. Look at the example. Raju is a tall boy. Just speaking about quality, no comparison. So, it is positive degree. Raju is taller than Vinay, comparing quality with other person. So, it is comparative degree. Raju is the tallest boy in the class, comparing the quality with a group of other people. So, it is superlative degree. To form comparative degree of an adjective, we add ER at the end of the adjective. To form superlative degree of an adjective, we add EST at the end of the adjective. For example, Long, Longer, Longest, Young, Younger, Youngest, Cheap, Cheaper, Cheapest. Let us consider one more example. Compare the speed of the creatures given on the screen. The first image is of a frog. The second image is of a tortoise. And the third image is of a snail. The frog is slow moving animal. Comparatively, the tortoise is slower than the frog. Compared to these two, the snail is still slower, that is, the slowest of the three creatures. The words slow, slower and slowest are adjectives in different degrees of comparison, that is, positive, comparative and superlative respectively. Usually, addition of er as suffix to the word in positive form gives its comparative form and addition of est as suffix to the word in positive form gives its superlative form. Let us do a typing activity on degrees of comparison. Degrees of comparison for multisyllabic words. In this section, we will learn about degrees of comparison for multisyllabic words. Now, we shall study about a different class of adjectives to which more and most are added to obtain the comparative and superlative degrees respectively. The word more and most are added as prefixes to the positive form which has two or more than two syllables. Here comes a question. What is a syllable? Syllable is a unit of pronunciation having one vowel sound with or without surrounding consonants forming the whole or a part of a word. Let us now learn about the special cases in degrees of comparison. To understand it more clearly, listen to a few multisyllabic words given below. The word useful is made up of two syllables, use, full. The word beautiful has three syllables, bu, t, full. So it has three syllables. Similarly, the word delicious has three oval sounds, de, li, shears. So to form comparative and superlative degrees of these adjectives, we don't add er or est, but we add the words more and most. For example, useful, more useful and most useful, beautiful, more beautiful and most beautiful, delicious, more delicious and most delicious. Take up the following activity to test your understanding. Refer to the dictionary and select the correct syllable form of the given word.
In this section, we will learn about a special case in degrees of comparison. Some words change completely in other degrees. A few of them are given below. Take up the following activity. Read the sentence and click the correct option which suits the sentence. Take up the following activity to check your understanding of the degrees of comparison. Read the sentence and click the correct option. Helping verbs. In this section, we will learn about helping verbs. Helping verbs are a particular class of verbs which are used to support the main verbs in sentences. Helping verbs are also called auxiliary verbs. Observe the following sentences. May I come in? Can I borrow your pen? These are the ways of seeking permission. In the first sentence, the helping verb may is used for seeking permission in a formal way to enter into the class. In the second sentence, the helping verb can is used to seek the permission in an informal way to borrow a pen from others. Just like these, the helping words can also be used for granting permission. Yes, you may come in. Yes, you can take my pen. Here, the same helping verbs used for seeking permission are also used for granting permission. May is also used for expressing the possibility of something as in the following sentence. Sudha may come to India next month. In this sentence, the word may is used neither for seeking nor for granting permission, but for expressing the possibility of Sudha's visit to India. The different types of auxiliary verbs are Let us now do an activity to understand the helping verbs. Read the sentences carefully and click the proper answers. Let us now do another activity to understand the helping verbs better. Click the correct option. Observe the directions given in the brackets and click the proper answer. Expressing wishes using unreal past. In this section, we learn what unreal past is 
and how it is used in expressing wishes. When we are not happy with the present situation and we want it to be different, for which we want to have something or to do something, we use the following structure to express wishes using unreal past. For example, I wish I had a car. I don't have a car now but I wish to have one. I wish there was an air-conditioned coach. There is no air-conditioned coach now. Now, let us do an activity to express wishes using unreal past. Read the following scenario and express the wish using unreal past. Click the proper answer. Writing skills. Write a letter to your cousin describing your visit to a village. Describe the reason for your visit and your feeling about your visit to the village. Observe the reference letter for the format. Write a paragraph describing your village. Observe the reference paragraph for the format. Observe the table of medals secured by different countries in an international sports tournament and click the correct answers to the questions given. First two are done for you. How many countries are listed in the table? There are nine different countries listed in the table. Which country secured the highest number of gold medals after China? Korea is the country which secured more gold medals after China. Now, attempt these questions on your own by clicking the correct answers. Listening and speaking. Be good to all. Let us now do an activity to improve our listening and speaking skills. Listen to the following story attentively. Long ago, there lived a little boy named Sharad. He was a good boy. He was good in his studies, obedient to his parents, more intelligent than other boys in his class and kind to everyone. Now, there was another boy named Shaker who studied in the same class as Sharath. Unlike Sharath, he was not good at studies and always liked to play during school hours. He misbehaved with his parents, bullied his classmates, and even ill-treated Sharath. One day, Sharath got a nice pen as a gift from his parents. He brought it to school so that he could use it in the class. When Shaker saw it, he was very jealous of Sharath. He asked Sharath, Hey, where did you get that? Did you buy it? My parents gave it as a gift to me, replied Sharath. Shaker became jealous. He rarely got any present from his parents. He decided to steal Sharad's pen. During recess, when everyone had gone out from the class, Shaker stole the pen from Sharad's bag and hid it inside his bag and went out to have his breakfast. When Sharad came back and could not find his pen, he informed his class teacher about it. The class teacher ordered the class monitor 
to search the bag of every child in the class. The missing pen was soon found in Shaker's bag. The teacher became angry and asked, Why did you steal it? Shaker started crying. When Sharath saw Shaker crying, he took pity on the boy. Sharath had no ill feeling against his classmate. He requested his class teacher not to take any action against Shaker now that his stolen pen was found. This opened Shaker's eyes. He asked for forgiveness from his teacher and Sharad. From that day, he became friend of Sharad and gradually changed himself to be as good as Sharad. Moral, do not harm someone even if he harms you. Be good to all. A few statements from the story are given below. Click on either true or false. Arrange the following sentences in proper sequence of the story, Be Good to All. Let us now listen to a few famous quotes. The more we come out and do good to others, the more our hearts will be purified and God will be in them. By Swami Vivekananda A man is called selfish not for pursuing his own good but for neglecting his neighbors. By Richard Watley it is very important to generate a good attitude, a good heart, as much as possible. From this, happiness in both the short term and the long term for both yourself and others will come. By Dalai Lama Follow-up work Take up the following activities. Collect information about the countryside and the town side from your elders. Use the table for reference. Talk to your friends about your favorite place and tell them why you like it. Get to know about their favorite places. Take an English newspaper, read the news and underline the words which you feel difficult to understand and look up their meaning in the dictionary. Gather your friends and plant a few plants in your school garden. Situational Conversation The section Situational Conversation is meant to improve the communication skills of the students. In this section, we will observe how to communicate over the phone. Telephonic Conversation A boy named Rahul wants to invite his friends Rishi and Naveen to his birthday party. Listen to the Telephonic Conversation Rahul first calls his friend Rishi. Am I speaking to Rishi? Yes, Rishi is speaking. Who is this? Rishi, I am Rahul. Hi Rahul, how are you? I am fine Rishi. What are you doing? I am completing my homework. Okay, do you know Rishi? Next Friday is my birthday. Yes Rahul, I know. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. I would like to invite you and Naveen specially for my birthday party. Thank you, Rahul. I will definitely join the party. Okay, Rishi. 
I have to call and invite Naveen also. Bye for now. Bye, Rahul. Now, Rishi is calling his another friend, Naveen. Hi, Naveen. This is Rahul. Hi, Rahul. How are you? I am fine, Naveen. How about you? I am doing good. I am going to celebrate my birthday this Friday. I would like to invite you to the party. Thank you, Rahul. But I am sorry that I cannot attend your birthday party on Friday. I am going to my uncle's place on Friday. I will meet you on Sunday. Okay, Naveen. No problem. We shall meet on Sunday as you said. Bye, Naveen. Bye, Rahul. You have successfully completed this section, The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse.